So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Munch and Learn, episode 42, Karen. And today we are streamlining your logistics journey with okay. one and only Mihai Firtala, one of the co-founders yeah. out of three from Driver Up. Mihai, yeah. welcome to this episode. Uh, just a brief introduction yeah, nice as to you. who you are and what you do. Uh, uh, thank you for the invite. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, my name is Mihai. I am a co-founder of Driver Up. We have uh, done a, a SaaS platform that helps logistic companies uh, streamline their operation and slowly moving them into a digital era. Um, it's quite a challenge, but uh, we are up for it. Uh, yeah, that's basically All right. what we do. Excellent. Thank you. So talk to me about... Uh before we just get into logistics, you cater to which segment and the logistic journey for your customers and who are your customers? Yeah, so we do, we could call it the last mile delivery platform that is for B2B companies. So uh, we do not work with business to consumer, but it's a, a last mile delivery platform that um, streamlines uh, the, the visibility between and all the stakeholders as well. So it's just pure communication. Let's, let's follow that. All right. So last mile, I think it has a, a different meaning for yeah. different people, especially if someone yeah. is in is in prison. Well, yeah. But uh, there you go. So what is the last mile when it comes to logistics out there? Well, last mile could mean a few hundred miles, probably okay. even three, a three-day journey. <laughs> it just, it, it depends where... Um, where the, the, the last, um, so after the, the shipment comes from ports into warehouses, it's the, that's the time where we actually take, um, where we begin. So that this is where our journey begins. Um, that's why we call it probably last mile. It's not correct, but it's, it happens within the country. So we do not deal with air or rail or sea. So whenever the the consignments arrive within inside of a country, that's the time when we actually begin the journey. That's why we could call it the last one. So for all our businesses on no limits today, yeah. uh, we are talking about physical products, right? At this point, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you talk about physical products, can you just talk about who, which kind of customers or clients do you cater to, and from which industry yeah. and sector, and what size? <laughs> Yeah, we only deal with transport companies. Uh, we, could, we could say um, everything what fits within an SME bill, uh, so no more than 10, 10.5 million in turnover. Um, and we work with any company that are within the logistics sector and in the transport uh, sector. Uh, no matter the size, no matter the industry, we could work from, uh, I don't know, crane operators or skips or environmental to uh, large distribution centers, uh, um, airports, and any other type of transport that is pharmaceuticals, so temperature control. The, the beauty, the beauty is that we we usually tailor the product by the by the way the customer wants it. So um, we realize there's no one size fits all. So we create whatever they need. Okay. You also mentioned at the start of the session that you are a SaaS organ yes. company. So yeah. just for the benefit of everyone listening, for those who don't know, what's, what, what do you mean by SaaS? One and uh, the... it is... Okay, go ahead. Yeah. The software as a service. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah. provide the software as a service. So is it very similar to someone buying a Microsoft subs subscription for Office and then they're yes. paying for it on a monthly basis oh, for you, sir? Okay. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. It's it's like a Microsoft service, but the the difference is you can actually talk to Microsoft and they they will do things for you. They will make changes. They will make right. your your business how you have it. That's the difference. <laughs> Probably right. good. And uh, talk to me. What uh, so as far as I'm aware, the, the number of logistics solutions right now are available in the market. So mm -hmm. what is your product specifically catering to at this point? Well, <clears throat> as I said, we um, we can serve anybody mm -hmm. from 
uh, that fits within an SME, uh, uh, let's say, financial structure. Uh, <clears throat> it, they don't, it, it does not matter the size. We do prefer now uh, to work with the, the smallest company because this is where we see that they did not become digital. Uh, they are still running with Excel and pen and paper. That's probably the biggest opportunity that is. Uh, these companies are family owned. They've been around for 30, 50, 60, 70 years. In some of them, even 100. Uh, and what made them successful are the system that they created. And to them, that system works. We cannot come with systems that are rigid and cannot be changed by the customer's need uh, when they have their own systems that actually work. So until you prove them that you are a solution that actually makes a difference and you can create whatever they need, uh, they will not change. They are happy with what they have. So probably this is the biggest challenge we face, um, mm -hmm. convincing them that there is something out there for them to become digital. So okay. slowly, slowly, uh, we're, we're moving into that direction. So how, how do you go about doing making that change happen? So let's say if there are a couple of businesses on uh, community, yeah. family-run businesses now, they're looking to, I mean, obviously next generation owners come in, that means the kids come in and they want yeah. to digitize, they uh, do some kind of digital transformation. I wouldn't say the complete thing. Uh, so let's say they yeah. look at the logistic part of it because managing transport is crazy. Uh, oh yeah. So so how would you how would you go in and make that change for the end so, user? Uh, we start with a premium product. So what mm -hmm. what we call a premium? It's basically a free product that covers all their uh, fleet maintenance and vehicle checks for them mm -hmm. to start using the system. Probably they use like a tracking and stuff like that. But in order to, to start using a transport management software that manages the, the business side of their business, um, they can start with uh, our free version. And uh, it's getting them used to what we have. And once they understand that, they will understand probably the value that it brings. Uh, and it could be someone that just buys the whole product or they will stay with the free version. It, it doesn't really matter for us. It's just um, everyone has their own needs. So we could uh, uh, give them a free product and they could come, oh, we, we like what we have so far. We would like to see it full or uh, we want changes within this or we want to add the full and change that. And we, we just work with them. Uh, mm -hmm. after uh, after they tried the, the free product um, to see where we can help and how we can sustain. Okay. Business. So if you have a transport company, like a third-party logistic company, who yeah. caters to multiple, yeah. let's say Amazon or Shopify or Etsy sellers, correct? And they mm -hmm. manage their own warehouse. Do you yeah. do you all then end up managing that part of the journey with them. So how, how, how do you go about doing that for e-commerce? I think I'm trying to bring this more to life out here. Well, so it's, we do not work with e-commerce. We're planning to do that. But okay. at the moment we have, um, uh, we, we work with B2B because when, when it comes to e-commerce, e-commerce is the transport does B2C. So it goes into customer, into end customer. So it's, okay. we, we work before uh, this uh, uh, before the the, um, the e-commerce happens, let's say. Okay. So, um, so if I if I take that a step back on the journey, yeah. So you mm -hmm. have an Amazon or a, a, yeah. a eBay or Etsy seller. They want to sell uh, send the uh, consignment coming from China to the yeah. third party logistics. So where in that chain does it come in? Yeah. So after the the the, the freight land or mm -hmm. arrives in a country, we uh, our customer take the load from where it mm -hmm. is and distribute it to different warehouses before it gets into fulfillment. So yep. it's just the step that it's before the, the person that buys. So it's basically that part. Um, 
once the plate arrives, then they collect it and deliver it. And yeah, that's probably okay. the only thing I could say. <laughs> All right. And uh, what 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 was the idea behind? I believe you're the three founders coming with this particular solution. What what did you all see in the market that pushed you all to have this <coughs> solution? There is no um, flexible solution and affordable for people. And everybody, when they think about this software, uh, they think that's really, really expensive, which is not the case now. Technology is evolved and uh, things can be done um, easier and with less effort than what it used to be. So the difference between us and probably uh, people that have done this before is we are using the latest technologies and for us it's easy and easier to build um, and uh, we're more flexible in terms of uh, how we approach the customers and we understand their business is successful because one entrepreneur initially done created some systems like we do in Action Coach. Yeah, so we're, we're learning about how we build our own systems. Those people build their own systems. They do not want to change their systems. You could come with your own logic of how you think things should be done, but they have their own logic how things are done. We have to, uh, we have to be there for them because they do not want to change. This is what makes them successful. So we have to uh, adapt to what they need. Not they to. We don't want them to adapt to what we're Got doing. It. Okay. And, yeah. and, and in terms of the software implementation or uh, the software onboarding for yep. getting this up, uh, what are the steps that one needs to take overall and what kind of benefits they, that one sees from that? So you have obviously your your products in coming yep. into a warehouse and then they need to be distributed to another yeah. business, yeah. right? So, yeah. So, yeah. so um, our product is... Uh, in terms of the journey, they, they, uh, they, they just buy the free product initially mm -hmm. they get used to it they have customer support from us in terms of like uh, um, training and how to use it uh, if they would like to take a step forward they can try it for 30 days um, a full version and see how it works and after that we can work on how we will onboard them directly like we could work with them and see what needs to be changed or uh, how they see things. Um, so we, we just uh, talk to them after they are ready to, to, okay. to take this step. We could, we could not convince anyone uh, that they need to take the step. So they, it has to be their decision. Let's Understood. say. Understood. Understood. All right. Uh, sounds great. And uh, when we talk about the whole, again, going back to streaming your logistics journey one shipment at a time, okay. all yeah. right, uh, uh, in the same particular theme, um, talk to me about a use case where you for your one of your customers and talk to me about the what they have uh, kind of learned and gained from it as we move on. So uh, one of them was a company that was doing airline uh, collections and deliveries. It was working predominantly with the airport. Um, the, and they couldn't find a solution that was uh, being exactly that, like being specific for uh, for airport collections and deliveries. We came and uh, we, we created all the, the, the niche features that they have. Uh, like uh, creating the booking when when they arrive at the airline and how long the driver is waiting at at the place from the point of uh, booking. So we created a lot of automation. Uh, we created some specific tariffs that they have. So we they calculate uh, um, the, the air, road freight and air freight is on a different tariff. It's, it's calculated in yeah. a different way. So we we help them create. Um, the tariffs that they have uh, that they had in Excel, we, we build it into the system. So what's on it? They put the journey, journey from A to B. Uh, and we put the number of pieces. The, the system will calculate itself. Okay. And overall, we streamlined their business and they um, we made them really, really efficient. 
in terms of how the operation works, which uh, it helped them a lot. Okay. Like they, they, they saved a lot of time just by or just by doing this, but sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes, sure. They have to put in the work, so they have to spend time with you. They have to spend time with us, so we can understand exactly what they do and how do they do it. Um, okay. Otherwise, it's it's really difficult. And in what way does your platform actually leverage technology such as AI or machine learning or IoT to enhance logistics operations? <laughs> well, uh, at the moment we're not. We, okay. we are working uh, on machine learning. Um, okay. Uh, this is the next step that we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will, uh, in terms of AI, what we we, we, we have is a chatbot that uh, understands the whole system. So that right. helps us in customer service and uh, support. When someone asks the questions, the AI will know exactly uh, how to answer and where right. the problem is. They, they, right. It helps with that. Um, but nothing artificial intelligence in terms of how transport is done because as I said, every operation is unique and they, they need someone to deal with it. Um, at, the moment, at the moment, at the moment, they still need people to work. Okay. And talk to me about security, right? Security is one of the major concerns well, in the logistic industry. So how does your platform actually ensure data security and compliance with industry regulations? Uh, so we are uh, regulated, uh, we, we are compliant with all ISO standards because we okay. use Amazon cloud services. Okay. Um, and not just that, we, we took everything a step further and uh, secured it uh, even better. But we are compliant with GDPR, so with all the data protection and um, okay. all that. Uh, and we've done... Um, we have procedures. During GDPR and uh, security, we we have procedures and how we 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 uh, get into the server and how we come out and how uh, um, how we update and how we move stuff into from uh, development into production. So it's just okay. your procedures and how we are doing things. Uh, other than that, there's no uh, I won't say it's rocket science. Like everyone probably is using this is just best practices. Sure. And if you okay. apply them, yeah. So it's it's mainly that. Okay, no, that's brilliant. And then talk to me about yeah. uh, you have this particular client you've signed up. How, how, and talk to me yeah. about scalability, because scalability is crucial, right, for growing businesses, uh, especially a logistics yeah. business. So how does your SaaS solution accommodate the scaling needs of your clients? Well, <clears throat> it, it scaling is completely up to them. Uh, it's um, we we can work with them uh, to to create, as I said, anything they might need. Uh, to scale, if they would come to us with a project, they we will sit down and develop it, and, and prior to development, we'll design it, look at it, uh, right, uh, and then we we will see if there's any bottlenecks and if we can help out with that, and it will be their ideas uh, and how they want to run their operation that will help them scale. Uh, we we just come in and just build technologies for them. So we just basically take their idea and turn it into a digital product. That's what we uh, do. All right. Yeah. Very, very good. Okay. And uh, what, let's look at the other part of it. Customer support is crucial for small businesses yeah. and with these mm -hmm. technologies. So how do you provide that assistance and guidance to a smooth onboarding process as well as ongoing support out there? Well, there is ongoing support only for like for premium customers like uh, for, for the one that uh, buy uh, uh, custom systems who we mm -hmm. actually go in and, and develop there's no premium support for the one that just buy a, a subscription or for the premium product uh, there's no subs there's no support for that um, the reason is they don't really need much support let's call let's just say that for, uh -huh. for the ones that actually buy a premium package uh, they do need support because they will encounter problems every single day. Uh, we have to be there for them. Uh, and we are going above and beyond. And we do a 12-hour, 5 okay. to 5, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we're there for them all the time. Uh, all right. for, the, for the other two services, we have like a training package where they can, we can learn exactly how the system works. 
worst worst case they can get in touch with somebody and we can explain but they probably they won't get there okay and you mentioned that you know we spoke about family run businesses or companies yes. having the existing business so integration with other systems and tools is crucial yes. right yes. for seamless yes. operation so how does your platform actually integrate with the existing software platforms that so small businesses may already we, have we we are integrated with most of the common platforms that they they run like mm-hmm. sage or xero or any other accounts package that they may have Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we're integrated with uh, their uh, the tracking systems. We could integ- we are already integrated with Courier Exchange, which is the largest exchange platform in the country. They could post, uh, and soon they could take work from Courier Exchange. Right. So we we are integrating uh, with whatever they might need. We had a customer coming; uh, they wanted like EDI integration, so we could do that. Any type of integration, any type of API EDI, we could do. Um, we could work on requests. So it's just a matter of everybody's using different systems. We just have to see who is using what, and if we okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And how we could integrate it. So basically, we could integrate anything, yes. Right, okay. And just talk to me. How does um, your platform actually empower smaller businesses to improve overall efficiency, right? How does it do it? Well, so smaller businesses are a bit chaotic, let's say. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, so what this sales software brings is organization. So it just makes them, uh, it's, it's like checks and balances and it, it tells right. them, oh, this is the things you need to do first. And then this is thing you think you need to second, third, fourth. And it just brings the whole organization into a, uh, into a collaboration. Everybody collaborates, everybody agrees that these are the standards. And this is how we work. It, it, it's, just, it's just that. It's, it's like uh, you're teaching us uh, at Action Coach. Uh, it's a franchise and it, yeah. it works in, in this way. So this system actually makes them and teaches them to work in a specific way. Okay. Uh, and at the end, it comes up with a happy customer and a happy driver and happy all stakeholders are happy so, because everybody yeah, yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. So everybody's happy. All right, yeah. brilliant. And uh, talk to me about looking forward. We always, when we, especially for SaaS based yeah. companies, we look at innovation, yeah. right? So, what new features and developments can small businesses expect from your platform to further enhance the log- logistic management capabilities? Yeah, so we go with the premium version. Uh, uh, we, we're launching another one in end of this month, next month, end of next month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, we are integrating career exchange uh, in full. So the smaller, even the smaller of the smallest, they could go onto our platform. And this is where we're going to leverage AI and machine learning. We're going to help them, even if they have their own customers. So let's say they have, it's a small logistic company. They have three customers and they need to go from A to B. Between A and B, we could provide them with other work using Courier Exchange. So okay. <clears throat> we're knowing that they're traveling from place to place. So we will we will help them find more work uh, um, in our platform. Okay. So great. Uh, yes. So Brilliant. We'll help them out. Yeah. Okay. And finally, what advice uh, to wrap up this uh, session would you give to small businesses looking to improve their logistic processes? And why should they actually consider your platform as a solution? Well, we probably because we're like them. We all come from logistics and transport background. Uh, okay. And uh, we are just like them. Our uh, most precious thing is service. So we're winning on service, not on, uh, on prices, on anything, even though the prices are really good, but our service is the best. So we are here with them on the whole journey uh, from start to finish. So we we will go above and beyond to make their, their business successful. Uh, this is our aim, to make their business successful. If they are successful, we are successful. So this is how probably this would work yeah, for us. All right, All right. excellent. Mihai. Uh, thank you very much uh, thank you. for coming on to this episode and you thank have you. a great day. Karen, thanks a lot for joining and George, thank you, uh, thank you too for listening, coming <laughs> in. <and> okay. <laughs> Bye for now, everyone. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.